Good evening or good morning, wherever you are in the world or in the universe. Um, today I want to talk about this. This is important to me. This may be important to a lot of people. I'm not sure. I hope so. You see, I'm 59, I'll be 60 very soon. Turning 40 was scary. Turning 60 is not. Feel the same. You're already used to what you got now. Um, but anyway, back in, how old was I? I would say back in my early 40s, I went through a rough patch, um, rough time in my life. And I, um, I had a separation from someone who I cared about. But it was my choice, it had to be in the end. Um, and I went through a really, I went through depression. This was not just some sadness. This, I went through depression. And I would sit at home and look out the window every night until I fell asleep at the back of the couch looking out the window. It was horrible. I had no appetite, I had no dreams, I had no goals, I didn't have anything on my mind except what's wrong with me? Am I going crazy? So <clears throat> finally one day, I did have a boyfriend at the time who was phenomenal and he took me to a place that helps people who have mental illness and that scared, that really scared me because I didn't have mental illness, I was just feeling down. He said, no, when you're calling me at work, every time I arrive there and I have to tell work I gotta go back home and I get written up for it and get ready to lose my job to run home to you to make you feel better because someone's with you, you have something wrong that's, you have a mental illness. Um, I had extreme anxiety. My heart was racing. I was always sweating. I just, couldn't focus, couldn't think and thought, I lost my mind. And I'm just, this is the rest of my life. I'm going crazy. The good news is I didn't want to kill myself. I've never wanted to kill myself. The bad news is everything else happened except that. And that, that is bad. You don't want to shower. You don't want to shave your legs. You don't want to talk to your friends. You have nothing to say. The TV on stimulates you you can't you have to turn it off you want peace you want quiet you want darkness that that's what you want you want to be in other words in bed sleeping it's the only thing that felt good was sleeping so i ended up at this huge place and you can call it an institution i thought i was going to be institutionalized there um but I filled out my paperwork for them as he, he made me go. He literally made me go or we were going to be splitting up. I knew that. Um, so I went crying and I was crying there. I couldn't fill out the rest of my paperwork. I remember he had to because I was crying. Um, wow. Yeah. Going back in time, you never forget when you had your first anxiety attack or panic attack or felt really depressed. You just don't forget. Okay. So we're there. The paperwork's done. There's a lot of people there, actually. It's a pretty big place. Um, a woman comes out and says my name. And I said, yes. And she said, y you need to follow me. And I'm like, oh God, here we go. And of course, my then boyfriend followed me too. God, they're loud. And, um, I uh, walked back and she opened the door, or the door was open. She walked in, I followed behind. She said, have a seat here and he can have a seat here. And I did. And she said, what's going on with you? I said, I think I've lost my mind. She said, nobody loses their mind. And that made me feel good. And that is true. Nobody loses their mind. You can just get super pissed off and go out and do bad things. A lot of people do. But you're not losing your mind. I, you, 
people claim insanity too much and I was not insane and so many others are not insane it's just an easy way out but there are some people who are insane there are very few okay I've learned that through group therapy she looked at me and she said and I told her and I was crying she said honey she said listen to me you're going through depression and when you have depression you have all these other symptoms that come up you have anxiety um, some people eat too much some people don't eat enough I wasn't eating at all um, some people sleep all the time some people don't sleep I wanted to sleep it felt good when I got to sleep but I was not getting to sleep and so I was the one that was staying up all the time um, just everything she said was a book written about me <laughs> it was weird and she said we're going to take care of you and you're gonna be okay and I thought I was gonna be led off to a room and I was crying and I asked her do I have to stay here she said oh no absolutely not I'm going to prescribe an antidepressant and I'm going to prescribe a mild tranquilizer for you now you take this mild tranquilizer as needed it's going to say on the bottle and you do that okay and the um, antidepressant I got was Paxil and you will take that once a day before bedtime because it tends to be a little sedating for many people she was right about that I slept um so after that she wrote the prescription she handed them to me she talked to me a little bit longer to calm me down I had to go back every week for I think six months and I had another to qualify and stay in the program and get better you had to go to um, group therapy which I've never been in group therapy but I'm not shy but I just didn't think I belonged with a bunch of people that had issues because mine was minor I was just told pretty much that I'm gonna be okay I'm not crazy I'm not insane I just need a pill and I'm gonna be better my way of flawed thinking a lot of people can think that way because we just don't know enough I think we're not told enough we're not taught enough that's why um so going through this I remember the prescriptions got filled finally I took my first Paxil that night before bed and I didn't feel much oh but before that happened I kind of had a jolt out of that depression for a little while so we ran to the library and we got books on depression I think I grabbed every one because there's no limit on the books you can get I'm pretty sure I grabbed every one on depression we sat in bed he read his book and I was reading about myself and he kept asking me how I felt and they said I feel I feel better I'm not going crazy they know what's wrong with me they have an answer but I want to live on medication the rest of my life you may not have to okay is what he said to me and I wanted to believe that so I hung in with those words as well and I was also scared to go to group therapy and the group therapy was very intimidating because the guy who taught group therapy would call you out he would call you by name where you had to stand up and tell your story ouch who wants to tell people that there are battling something that they don't even really know what the heck it is except the doctor said it was depression the doctor said I had anxiety the doctor said I I have a little bit of agoraphobia I didn't want to leave home I uh yeah don't want to tell the world that but I did I told all the people in that class that I found out there were people in there that was off so much worse off rather than me I was small fries compared to that at that point so here's where I'm going now that we're into almost nine minutes and something um here's where I'm going antidepressants at the time were not addictive you did not wean off you could stop them that's what it was and that's how you were told no matter what and I remember that clear as a just I remember it completely remember every word ever said to me you don't forget 
Um, your antidepressants, we will try one day when we think that you are doing a lot better, we will stop your antidepressants. And I'm like, oh, I could just stop them myself. You can, but we don't recommend that because, you know, you have chemicals in your brain. They're just not hitting right. You know, they're not going back and forth properly and connecting and communicating. So we'll know when it's time. Okay, whatever. Then let's get on to the benzodiazepine that I was prescribed. It was Xanax. I think that's the first choice from many doctors. Xanax. I remember that I needed the first one, I think, on the next next day when my then boyfriend went to work. Anxious. Antidepressants didn't start working yet in my system, but not really doing the job. But I was feeling better knowing I'm not going crazy. Like I said, I was holding on to those words. Okay. All of a sudden, I started to feel anxiety and anxious. So I take a whole one. Jeez. Gosh. The first anti, the first um, benzodiazepine you ever take, it'd knock you on your butt. Literally. I remember I turned the TV on after that. I'm like, whoa. I'm going to get some books. Got some books. Skimming through my depression books. Looking at the TV. And life was grand. It was the best feeling in the world. I felt like I used to always feel. I felt human. I felt normal. I felt perfect. Very bad thing to feel. Very fake from a pill. Not really you. Not really you at all. So... I had to stick with them, as I was told, because if you run out too soon, you don't get a refill. You're on your own. They are a controlled substance. So I was getting the antidepressants in me. The weekend had rolled around. Thank God he was home with me for two days and nights. So we laid out in a field um, looking up at the sky at these the shooting stars. It was that night. It was a ball. Didn't need any antidepressants at all when he was there, or any um, benzodiazepines when he was there. Still taking my antidepressants. Now I'm starting to feel the antidepressants. Now at nighttime, I'm taking a shower, and I'm starting to feel sleepy, which I haven't felt in a long time. Starting to feel sleepy. And that was great. That was a good feeling feeling normal it was the medication but I was feeling normal um I went to sleep slept through the night like a baby got up the next morning was hungry making breakfast it was great life was back to normal until one problem came along I uh was feeling good I was probably into my second or third week on uh Paxil and then they were they would refill Xanax as needed. Um, and I remember I started saying, well, God, I'm, I'm feeling so good on these. Let me just take a half a Xanax. And I would take a half a Xanax. And I got a job. And it was a sales job. Well, a tough job. But I met friends there and people who were just their names. And they meant a lot to me. It was great. It was a big place. And it was wonderful. And... Um, I was going through every now and then an anxiety attack there. I would go to the bathroom and I would take, I'd say half, half of the Xanax. Cause I wanted them to last longer, half of the Xanax. And um, it would take the edge off. I was able to finish work, but I was starting to feel not so hot. I wasn't on top of my game for what I needed to be doing in sales. So anyway, long story short, I quit the job. Um, I went back home. I got another job, which was easier. And um, I was working with the American Red Cross. And usually you're a volunteer. I started out as a volunteer, and then I became paid. I was doing data entry. And uh, data, 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 okay, entry. And um, I just, a little stressful too there. I remember looking around and like, 
sneaking a piece of my benzodiazepine or taking a whole one, my Xanax. Um, I noticed I needed more. Yeah, that's what it was. I needed more. The halves were taking the edge off, but I wasn't on top of my game. I needed to be. The whole one was making me feel a little drowsy. That was starting to go away. The, the feeling I got when I took the first benzodiazepine, I never felt again. Never felt that again. Never had that feeling again. So I was kind of leveled out and just cruising through life. A fake life. I want to say something about all this. The benzodiazepines, um, wow. When I started them, I was seeing two different psychiatrists. One had quit, another one came in. And I remember not one of them told me, they are, you will become addicted. If you're on them for six months, a year, whatever, longer, you will become addicted. These are, these are medications that uh, they're really hard to get off of. I purchased this book and it's turning yellow because I got it way back in the day. It's a bright light, but if you see the pages and just everything about it, it's old and it's used and I've had it for a long time and I've been through it and you can't really grab the yellow. They look white, but they're yellow. Um, even the cover is a disaster, which is probably not picking up. It's an old book. What year? I don't know. Benzo Blues, Overcoming Anxiety Without Tranquilizers. I ended up having to buy that. They ended up wanting to cut me back on the benzos. I ended up telling them I can't do it. They ended up saying, yes, you can. You can go on something else. It's called Buspar, if I said that correctly, because I was only on it for a week and I could not function. Um, it took over the benzodiazepine, my Xanax. That was stopped abruptly and I was put on abuse par. Mm -mm. I seen two people standing in front of me. There's one person, but there's two. Who do I talk to? It was weird. I can't handle them. I didn't like them, but I didn't like the way I felt. It was, it was an awful feeling for me. For me. Not everybody gets out. A lot of people do very well on them, and I'm happy. I couldn't do it. So I went back and I said, this isn't working. These pills, I can't function. I'm getting ready to lose my job. I got put back on a benzodiazepine. Longer lasting. You need to take a lot of Xanax to really, you know, it was like, what, three or four a day to get me through? Really? Okay. And you never told me they were, I was going to become addicted to them. I got put on a longer lasting one. It was called Clonopin. I was on that for many, many years. Then I hit the, the years where they did this so-called study. And the study said, benzodiazepines, we've been researching this, it causes dementia in patients, long-term use, which would fit, I fit the criteria for that, I would think, at that point. What? So I found a great psychiatrist who is now retired, but he kept me on clonopin. And when he, the clonopin was kind of, you know, you do build a tolerance to these tranquilizers. Nobody told me. Again, here we go again. Up the dosage or more pills. Or let's switch it up. Let's do Valium. It's another long lasting benzo. Well, here's what we can do. We even tried this. And you're working, so a different job now. What we can do is you can take a Xanax when you feel a little edgy, but then before bed, take your Valium. I was really dizzy. It wasn't working. That's not how it works. For me, it didn't work for me. I was a walking chemical, and everything's a chemical. 
right? But I was like a walking benzodiazepine. It wasn't working. And I told him I was feeling like head because we should really be mixing them. But I'm trying to keep you at your job and stable. And he was a good man. He was a he was a very good psychiatrist. He he because he tried. He was just throwing darts in the dark trying to help me. Um, we went through many different antidepressants. <laughs> Where I broke out in rashes. One put me in the ER. I couldn't swallow. Um, I remember it all. But again, you can just stop them. I walked in to the institution that I was taken to way back in the day with my boyfriend at the time. And I remember at the six-month mark, oh, the doctor happened to be standing there talking to the receptionist at the desk. And I walked in. I said, hey. She goes, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm stopping my antidepressants. I feel better. She said, don't just stop them because we don't want all of those symptoms to come back. They didn't. All those symptoms did not come back. They didn't. I've been off of them. They did not come back. What came back? I'm still on them. I'm still on them. I was on clonopin. And I weaned myself from four a day. I know, it's a high dosage. One milligram, four a day. Down to two. One in the morning and one at night was holding me through fine for a couple years. Then I went through a very bad spell with a max. And I think that really, really got me. High blood pressure walked in my door. And I don't have high blood pressure. Um, I was really in a bad way really in a bad way a lot of bad things were happening absentee boyfriend he was my husband i divorced him he stayed with me because i didn't i thought he could change anyway long story short i went through a very 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 bad time i couldn't get off of them i tried so guess what my doctor retired who was great my psychiatrist. I had looked for other psychiatrists. Nope, we don't prescribe benzodiazepines anymore. They did a study. The studies have concluded that benzodiazepines cause dementia in patients, and we don't want you to become one of them. Give me a break. Give me a break. So I talked to my then retired psychiatrist who said, yes, they did do a study, and they never finished it. They never finished that study on benzodiazepines. They just stuck with, oh, it's causing dementia in some patients. So we should only do it short term and then pull them off of it. But they never finished the study, is what he told me. And I believed him and looked it up. They never finished the study. They never finished studies on a lot of crap that they should finish studies on with people in trials or medications, drugs, all kinds of drugs. So here I am today. I'm on Valium. I'm on three, three, three a day. Um, they hold me steady. They help me. I'm on a doctor. I'm with a doctor now. I see him telehealth. Um, who talked about eventually weaning me off of these and putting me on something else? I'm going to take you back. Whatever medication you go on, you don't know about it. Don't just read that little pamphlet and count on it. You talk to your doctor and you ask, am I going to be addicted to this drug? Is this drug, yeah, am I going to be addicted to it? Am I going to have problems getting off of it? How am I going to live a life with it? If I have an anxiety attack and I'm out somewhere, these medications stop me from going into a full-blown panic attack where you need to pull over and call an ambulance because I feel like I'm having a flipping heart attack. And that's how I learned my lesson. And I'm still learning because I'm still looking for alternatives. Now look, I could take magnesium, nature's miracle. It's just, it, it helps calm you down a little bit. Okay. Not enough when you've been on these. 
not enough when you've been on benzodiazepines. So I'm miffed. I'm very miffed about all that. And I want you to know that's my story and that's where it goes. And I'm not at the ending yet. But I'll let you know when the ending comes and what I get put on. Because this new doctor I'm seeing, telehealth, talked about putting me on boost par and get me off of benzos. No. No. I have never, ever abused these medications. And I know the problem with peop with doctors are, it's not the fact that it causes dementia. Do you really think they care if it causes dementia? Do you really think they care? A lot of drugs have side effects that cause cancer. Estrogen is one of them, but they'll prescribe estrogen. So do you really think that's it? No, because there's money in treating dementia too. It's not about these. It's about the fact that people get on these and they start selling them in the streets. Okay? It's a controlled substance. Controlled substance means if I run out of my bottle sooner than I should, because I'm being watched by Big Brother, I should not be allowed to be on them. Where are they going so fast? Either I'm munching them down like Tic Tacs, or I'm selling them on the streets or something's wrong. They don't have that in my profile. That's not, no, no. They don't have that on me. I'm not flagged anywhere for that because I don't do that because I need my benzo diazepines. I need them to help me function and calm me down when I start to feel anxious. Driving makes me feel anxious. I need the my medications to make me feel anxious. Let dementia be my problem in the end. People get dementia as they get older anyway. The majority of them. And they treat you for as long as they can. Do you really think they care if someone's in their 70s and they have dementia? No. It's big pharma is what it is. And it makes me angry. So, benzodiazepines, I'm not sitting here treating them like it's the miracle pill. They're far from a miracle pill. But they sure as heck will. They will, if you're on the right one, calm you down when you need to take that edge off. When you need to be able to stay at your job and work. When you need to be able to raise your children and be of sound, sound mind. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm talking about after you've been on them for a time and you know how you're going to react. Yes, you feel anxiety coming? That's what they're for. They're anxiety medications and that's what they were made for. Why do they want to do away with them? People are abusing them. The abusers who get prescribed them need to be on a list and pulled off. Do not, do not have them on benzodiazepines anymore. Wean them off of them and get them on something that nobody wants to buy on the streets. I am one person who needs my medications. And my doctor even told me one thing. He said, with everything you're going through, when you go ahead and you take your my blood pressure medications, the Topol, brings down your heart rate and blood pressure, go ahead and take your benzo with it. It's not going to hurt you. Actually, it might be a plus for you, and it is. And it is. So do not. Do not pull people. Do not make everybody else suffer who needs them because of the people out there who are abusing them. The abusers need to be flagged, tagged, and off of them. Period. And this book is a good book. It does tell you how to get off of the benzos. It does help you. Now look, meditation is great. I get meditation. I get it. I can meditate. I can stop and meditate in a crowd of people. I can meditate. I get it. You know, making progress. Um, taking charge of your life without benzodiazepines. This, this, this is going to be the rest of my lifelong journey. I want to live. I don't have to live by a book. 
that teaches me a lifelong journey now that I gotta switch everything up. Doctors do not want to prescribe. I remember when primary cares were prescribing a benzodiazepine. It's not my fault. And it may not be your fault that people are out there abusing them. And forget about the dementia thing because there's a pill for that that they give you or pills that they're gonna give you. If you're not so worried about dementia, let your doctor, no, no, wait a minute. My psychiatrist has been a psychiatrist his whole life. He retired out way past his years. And when he told me those studies were never completed completely, they couldn't find exactly what they were looking for. I believe him and he kept me on him. My mind is sharp. My mind is sharp. I know other people in their 70s who are on them and been on them for a very long time. They are sharp. They are sharp. You can't predict who's gonna get dementia and who is not. You cannot do that. And they need to stop playing around with people who need their medications. That's all I'm asking for. That's all I want. I'm not an addict. I'm not an addict of anything. I have built up a dependency on these medications and nobody ever told me that was going to happen. If they did, I would not have started it. I come from an alcoholic family and I don't drink alcohol. Never have, I never will. So, that being said, stick to your guns, talk to your doctors, because psychiatrists are not wanting to prescribe these drugs now either. They're safe. I mean, once you get used to them and know how you're going to act, they're safe drugs. In the beginning, I wouldn't think about driving with them because, yeah, I felt them. But after that, it's just, you take one and you even out your mind. You even out your anxiety. I've tried it. I've, I've tried going the route with just antidepressants way back. It didn't work. That is their hopes. It just doesn't work when you've been on them as long as I have. Can't stop. Don't want to stop. I need my medication. And if I had some other serious illness, I would get my medication. There's a lot of controlled substances out there. If they want to pull one away from us, that's well needed. Don't abuse it. Don't give it away. Don't sell it. You use it as needed on that bottle. And we'll show them there are people that do need their medications and I'm one of them as soon as I forget to take my med and I've forgotten before did I take it or did I not oh I'll wait my body will let me know and yes it does I start having the shakes I get a headache whoa it's bad I'll have a panic attack well I forgot my medication and then I'll count right right radio I forgot to take my pill. I'm wishing you all well. I'm wishing you all good night, good day. And that if you're on any medications, don't let them pull you just because of, you know, do your research. Do your research. You know, big pharma is out there. I don't know what went wrong with these benzodiazepines. I don't know what went wrong with a lot of medications that they're pulling people off of that they need. Mm -hmm you know, when people are actually really needing them. I, I don't get it. You used to be taking aspirin, you know, to thin your blood and, and it will help you to live longer and not have a heart attack. They've, they've stopped that now too. And they want to sell you a pill, a more potent pill for the same purpose. I'm gonna step off of my soapbox now. I wish you all well, but this is a very real and dear subject to my heart, to my brain, to my livelihood. 
And for those of you who are on a benzodiazepine, talk to your doctor. Please, please stay safe and be well. Goodbye.